Hello, you might have recently received an appointment letter from the Office of Community Standards or Residential Life about an incident of concern. We've created this video to help you better understand the conduct process for lower level cases that don't involve suspension and to alleviate any stress you might have going into the process. Here at the Office of Community Standards, our work is grounded in the values of collaboration, community, developmental growth, equity, humanity, and inclusivity. In that spirit, the OCS truly believes that mistakes are opportunities for improvement. We'll mainly focus on engaging you around the incident and the decisions you made at that moment. To learn more about these values, you can visit pages 103 through 104 in the student handbook. Let's jump right into the gist of the process. First, any community member, be they a student, faculty, staff member, neighbor, or formal Northwestern organization, can submit a community concerns report. Once we receive that report, we'll take a close look at it to see if there is enough information to kickstart the student conduct process. In evaluating the report, we'll look for the who, what, when, where, and why to see if there are any potential violations of the student code of conduct. In cases where violations may have occurred, we'll assign a case resolution coordinator. They could be an assistant director or residential director if you live on campus, and an OCS staff member if you live off campus. That case resolution coordinator will then be the one to send out notice letters to any of the students potentially involved in the violation with a brief description of what was shared, including the relevant date and time. It will also include the specific policies that any alleged behaviors might have violated. Upon receiving the letter, you'll be asked to meet with the office for a hearing to talk about what happened. The hearing will be your opportunity for you to learn more about the process, ask any questions on your mind, and to share with the coordinator your perspective on what happened during the incident. As you prepare for your meeting, take time to reflect on what you remember about the incident. Even though you don't have to answer every question, it's important that you are completely honest in every answer you do provide to avoid consequences for providing misleading information during the hearing. No matter what the case is about, we aim for every resolution to be prompt, fair, and impartial. We'll openly hear multiple sides and keep ourselves trained on topics such as bias and process management to achieve the most accurate outcome. Throughout the process, you are allowed to have an advisor accompany you in your hearing. According to Northwestern policy, that advisor has to either be a student, staff, or faculty member at the university who cannot play another role within the process, such as a witness. They can help support you emotionally or through process coaching, but can't speak during the hearing. Once your coordinator has all the relevant information at hand, they'll then have to make a responsibility decision. They'll do so based on the preponderance of the evidence standard, which basically means that the burden of proof will be satisfied when there's enough evidence that demonstrates that the allegations have a greater than 50% probability of being true. In other words, if a claim can be demonstrated to be more likely to be true than not true, the burden of proof is met. If you are eventually found responsible for any policy violation, your coordinator will then turn to Northwestern's sanctioning guidelines to choose the appropriate sanction or sanctions. For more information, you can turn to page 40 of the student handbook. Our sanctions serve several purposes. They're not only meant to address the cause of the violation, but also to reestablish alignment with community standards. They might also seek to repair the harm to those impacted and restore you to a good standing within the university community. After the hearing, you'll receive the coordinator's findings and potential sanctions within an outcome letter. At this point, you can choose to appeal. However, you'll have to qualify on at least one of three grounds. Number one, new evidence. Number two, procedural error. Or three, findings or sanctions that are manifestly contrary to the information provided. If any questions pop up, your case resolution coordinator will be happy to provide explanations or clarify. If you've ultimately received a final decision and it includes a sanction, be sure to submit it by the listed due date in the letter. Now that you've watched through a nutshell of the student conduct process, we hope that it was helpful to you as you prepare for your hearing. If you have any questions at all, your coordinator will always be there to answer them.